Good morning, Cherry View students. This is Mr. Clifford. I'm in fifth grade this morning, where I always am. Today I'm going to be reading one of my favorite books, Harvey Potter's Balloon Farm. And I love the illustrations in this and also the story. And it's not Harry Potter, it's Harvey Potter. Harvey Potter was a strange fella indeed. He was a farmer, but he didn't farm like my daddy did. He farmed a genuine U.S. government inspected balloon farm. No one knew exactly how he did it. Some folks say it wasn't real, that it was magic. But I know what I saw, and those were real, actual balloons growing out of the plain old ground. Harvey Potter had some of the prettiest colors you'd ever see on a balloon. Please in purple, orange ray sun, yellow and yellow, there was rip two shot red and jelly bean black, bloomin' blue, and grassy green. He had all kinds of shapes too, round balloons, long ones, animal shapes, clowns with big noses and mouths. He even grew monster balloons with some scary faces and great big sharp teeth in time for Halloween. Tell you, Harvey Potter was a strange fellow, all right. To look at him, he was quite plain, never wore nothing to draw attention to himself. His hair was kept close cropped to his head. Overalls with a shirt underneath were his uniform. There was nothing special about his face either. What wasn't so plain about him was the conjure stick he carried with him wherever he went. Sometimes he used it to scratch his back, but mostly he just carried it under his arm. It was Weasel Mayfield who called the government on him. So the government came out to Harvey Potter's balloon farm bright and early one morning. Our whole town turned out for them. And though nobody said what they thought, we all held our breath hoping we could keep our balloons. We never knowed how to grow nothing but trees, maple, sycamore, pine, oak, and regular kinds of stuff like corn and okra and tomatoes. But Harvey Potter grew balloons, and no one knew what he used for seed either. Anyway, the government men were standing around in white coats and white hats and white gloves, and they kept us so far back we could hardly see. But I climbed right up there in that sycamore tree where I could see everything. They pulled and they poked, and finally they pricked one of those plants with a pin, and what was supposed to happen did. The balloon popped, even though even they couldn't argue with that. So they gave Harvey Potter the right to grow balloons. He never asked for them, asked them for it, mind you, but he took it anyway, just to be polite. Let me tell you, it made everybody happy. Well, almost everybody. Weasel was a little sore. Now, <clears throat> I had quite an interest in Harvey Potter's balloon farm, and I decided I was going to get to know him. He didn't seem to mind. In fact, he let me get to know him right good. I'd bring him lemonade or sit on his porch and swing in his swing, but he never would confide in me about how he grew those balloons, and I didn't pry. After a while, I just liked going around him. He didn't ask you no questions about why you weren't this or why you weren't that. He just let a person be. He let a person sit and think out loud sometimes, and well, that's a mighty good thing to do. Still, something in me was a hankering to know, so I decided I was gonna go out there in the nighttime. That's when he did his field work. I told you he was strange. To this day, I'm indebted to that sycamore tree and that big old moon. It was as full as it was wide that night. I saw him the second he opened his door, plain as day. He stood there on his front porch, hands in his pockets, looking straight ahead where the fields were and that conjure stick was underneath his arm. He just stood there, eyes staring straight ahead at something off yonder ways. Then he came down off that porch. Step, step, step. His steps all seemed so big and so loud, it must have been his heavy field shoes. He walked down to the field, and without a warning, he commenced to holler. Next thing I knew, he started dancing and prancing with that stick held out in front of him like it was his dancing partner. Then that stick started to glow a nice orangey color and stood up directly on its own. And when it rose up in the air, Harvey Potter rose up right along with it. 
The two of them were making some mighty fine footwork six feet or so off the ground. They were a-floatin' and a-bobbin'. Why, it appeared as if the two of them had turned into glowing balloons themselves. Altogether, it was a strange sight, which got even stranger. Harvey Potter dropped back down to earth, grabbed hold of that stick, and waved it around over his head. He whooped, and he hollered, and he yelled, and he carried on. I'm not ashamed to say I was a mighty scared. I would have jumped right down and run for home, but my eyes were just plain glued to Harvey Potter. Then Harvey let go of that stick, and it started to bounce and float over the field, dropping down here and there in nice, neat rows. And all the while, Harvey Potter just kept a whooping and a screeching. All of a sudden, that stick came to a complete halt and flew right back into his hand. That's when Harvey Potter stopped screeching and he turned around and he looked directly up at that sycamore tree. I thought for sure he saw me, but I guess not because he turned back around and went inside his house and didn't come out again. I climbed down and I fell off to sleep waiting and in the morning I woke up wet with dew and shivering cold and little bitty mounds were popping up all over the ground. When I ran back after supper, they had all come up in the glory of that day's sun. I tell you, it was a sight. Harvey Potter saw me out there in his fields admiring his latest crop of balloons. He said I could take as many as I wanted. I took three. A clown, an elephant, and I couldn't risk the jelly bean black one. I didn't touch the monster ones on account that they were too plain scary. Ah, those were the times. Harvey Potter went right on growing the best, prettiest balloons this side of anywhere. And we never heard a word from the government men again either. As for Weasel Mayfield, he was so riled up over the fun we were having with our balloons that he packed up and moved off to parts unknown. I remember those days well. It was the summer of 59 when I was hankering to leave home myself to find out what the world had to offer. Harvey Potter grew me a balloon that was big enough to carry me off. That's how I landed in this place here. I never did go back home and never did want to. This here place was just right for me. <clears throat> These days I farm, and I'm not one to brag, but I have harvested my 32nd crop of balloons. Now I don't grow mine the exact same way as Harvey Potter does on account that I'm not Harvey Potter. I have my own methods, maybe, I'll show you someday. Thank you.